lights up internet deep painting things uh, we do have we are we do have one model scheduled to paint so we will be painting one model I'm gonna park it right there just so you know what we're doing but in the meantime I am going to get some extensions because I have to set up uh, uh, the X split on this new computer. So I'm going to type in, search the store. I want the YouTube, YouTube extensions. Couldn't find anything. Um, what if I just type in chat? Liars. Liars. YouTube live. You are lying to me. Oh. What if I type in Twitch? No, nothing, huh? Let's go clear search since it's being such a jerk about everything. <laughs> uh, number of downloads. No. No. Really? Chat. Chat. Zero results for chat. You are lying. You are lying. X split. You are lying. Oh, gosh. Zero results for Twitch. You are seriously lying. You are really, really lying. Let's go to reading. Wow. Is this thing not? Okay, something is seriously wrong with the store here. Show my plugins. Do I have? I have Facebook Live. I have Twitch. I have UStream. I have YouTube Live. Where? Uh, la la la. How does it not have my extensions? Get more extensions. I think we're there. I think we're going to get it. All right. I'm going to switch over to my YouTube channel for comments, and we're going to see how this stream is going over on the YouTube side of things. Why does it have me? Okay. Yeah, this is uh, busted. What if I just hit nothing? Like if I just do that, what if I show sources? Ha 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 ha! Look at that! Now I found many things. All right. So I'm gonna go to Creator Studio, and I'm gonna go to live streaming. I keep like losing and gaining subs, and it's it's just permanently at the same number, so I don't think it matters. Let's view it on watch page. What is the status of the stream? Good! Is you crazy? Is you crazy? Let's see what the... Hey, what's up, Demon Jester J? Let's see what the sound looks sounds like. All right. What's up, guys? Um... Yeah, so bear with me. We're, we're on a new laptop here, so I am setting up all the little bells and whistles. What? Stop. Stop it. All right. Here. Let's search the store for you, YouTube chat. YouTube chat viewer. Yes. We found it. What's up, Blade Wolf? Hey, look, people are pouring in. They can't wait to see the nothing stream. It okay. Oh, gosh, look at that. Oh, that's bad. 
Got a little bit of buffering there, didn't we? Okay, hold on, guys. Yeah, I wasn't worried that that was going to happen. Getting a little bit of buffering there, aren't we? Let's go. Yikes. Buffering. All right. Installation complete. All right. And now we want... Oh. Still getting things. I don't understand. Still getting things. Are we okay? Are we are we are we alright? Twitch chat viewer. Twitch IRC chat viewer. These are things that we want. Okay, let's install this sucker. Bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we have things. And now we can close those things. Bum 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 bum. I'm gonna hang this up. Boop. We're gonna delete that. Boop. Boop 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 boop. How about, how about now? Look at that. <gasps> we did it! We have a thing! Bum, 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 Okay. What's your awesome news, Demon Jester J? Okay. Are we good? Should be good now. We should be still live streamed or uh simulcast, so dun 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 I know I'm doing like the price is right song, but that's what we're doing. Some nice guy on Facebook sent me a new in-the-box Badger Extreme Patriot 105 airbrush for free. Well, congratulations, man. Good deal to you, sir. Please let me do this. What do I got to do to get this to be a thing? Please let me be a thing. Bop. Let's get rid of all this stuff that I don't need right now. I'm still not connected to any YouTube chat, so... Come on, man. Come on, man. Okay, I'm going to try this again. Just got today. Let's refresh it. Oh, it still didn't work. Ugh. All right. Let's let's do the other one since we know. Let's do Twitch. I see chat viewer. Okay. Now we have two black boxes. Isn't that great? And we're going to authorize XSplit to use Twitch. There we go. And this is us. And dun 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 dun. Okay. And we're going to do this. Bonk. Whoa, there's all kinds of things going on. Um, and we're going to connect to that bad boy. Yeah. All right. So that one is working. Anyway, congratulations, Demon Jester J, on your new Patriot 105. Um, so 
Oh, we're getting some we're getting some talky talky chats. Talky chats. Chatty talks. Now you gotta fix the YouTube. And we're just gonna crawl into this painting show. I just don't understand why that one doesn't work. How come the Twitch one is like, yeah, I'll work it, I'll do it. And the YouTube one is like, no. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's all we needed is just a window. Okay. Get that. I'm sure you guys are going to want to love watching this on playback. Like, oh, can't wait to see him set this up. It's been like 20 minutes or something. <laughs> okay. Yes. Just yes. Just yes. Okay, and then I can do this. Oh, snap. Okay, there we go. So now we got all, look at that, all your chats. Yeah, skip to 30 minutes later. Don't watch. That should go like that, in all honesty, and that can go like that, I guess, the uh, the Twitch thing. That's good. All right. There is one more thing I want, but, okay, let's go to, gosh, I know this is taking a long time, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I know you guys are down to just hang out, like say obnoxious things in the chat. I don't care. I'll read it. Just, just please bear with me. Okay. Whew, my wife has a heater on, so... So that happened. Um, anyone remember my Dropbox account? I totally forget. What is my? I think it's. I think it's this. And I think the password is like something like. I think that's it. I think that's the password. Oh, I think it's gonna work. Oh snap! We did it. We did it, people. No, don't show me around. No. No. Don't. No. I don't need... I know where I'm going. Um, unless they... Well, they did change it to make it dumb. They did change it to make it dumb. Where is... Okay. Uh, then my ISP has been messing up so much that I complained to them so much to them as a sorry, they gave me an Amazon gift card one month off. Wow. I don't have an, I have a terrible Amazon ISP. Oh gosh. Why does it hate me? Let's try it. Um, pip. Okay. Pip to clean. What about pip circle? No. Pip too clean. No. Uh, this would be pip. Uh, this is a. Do I have a PNG? All right. Let's try it. Let's see if I can find it. I bet it's in here. The circle logo has got to be in here. What is all of this? What are these things that I... No. No. Oh, man. Yep, ain't in here. What a bummer. I don't even have a... Yeah. Well, I'll find it later. It's not that big a deal. I'll find the logo and just stick it on here. Could it be in here? No, it's probably just... It could be loose. It's probably just loose. Okay. It's not in there. I 
just can't believe it's not in here. Actually, I can kind of believe because I'm bad at keeping like important files. But I kind of need my logo. Like it always, it's, it's here. Dude, there is no. Oh, that's a dope file. No, no, sir. There's, it's not here. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to have to manually stick it on there. I just cannot believe it's not in here. Ugh. How upsetting. Okay, no worries. I wish I cared more. Okay, I already got the armor painting miniature painting kit. The War Paints Mega 3 set in my cart and AW Pro. Looking to see if it's a good compressor. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I use a crap comp compressor, but it's it works. It's good. Okay, we're just doing the damn thing. Here we go. Uh, apologies for the massive delays, but again, we are... Cool. Let me just say, cool. Um, apologies for the massive delays, but we're going to get to it, okay? We're going to do a little painting tonight, as promised. We are working on Heath Ledger Joker here. Um, I don't know if that's in focus or not because he is in a gloss black as it stands. And I don't know if that is correct. So, uh, no problem. You're awesome. Thanks, man. All right. Here we go. We're going to do the damn thing because we got to do the damn thing. Now, unfortunately, my uh, my test there did not pass the way I was hoping. I was hoping that this new PC would somehow fix the lag of the Google Hangouts web page as being broadcast through XSplit. And that's probably not going to happen. That does not look like it's in the cards for us. Uh, but we're, gonna, we're just going to paint. We're going to do our damn thing. All right, Joker is so cool. I agree, Joker is cool. Um, I was working on some Ninja All-Stars because that's going to be amazing. Um, but right now, we're just going to turn this to here. Hi, everybody. Hey, what's up, Albert? I always think of uh, Dr. Nick Riviera when somebody says hi, everybody, in the chat. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Love Dr. Nick. Hope everybody had a good Halloween. Mine was lackluster. Yes, sir. Could have been better. Could have been better. Now, for those of you who knew of my cool shark con costume um, and you knew of the uh, the problems, the social issue that my my shark, my specific shark costume brings to light. Uh, you you will understand this situation. Yep, that's why I did it. <laughs> uh, remember, the coat is Barney purple. Keith Ledger said it before. Actually, I have a I have a uh, an example in front of me that I'm going to work off of. But thank you, I do agree. Um, yeah. So the thing about my costume is. Um, you know, when we were walking around the mall Saturday and the whole family was in the getup, then it was, quote unquote, cute. It was adorable. It was great. Um, and uh, things looked pretty good until, of course, I uh, decided to walk around by myself for a second. Like, I took a brief moment to walk around and get some boba while my kids were watching a magician or something, some, like, creepy dude. They were watching some guy. Got a little bit of clog here with the gray, but I'm actually going to take advantage of that. Whoa. There's an area there that does not have any primer in it, and I have to make sure it has primer in it now. Um... 
So when I went off by myself, my costume, which was a shark carrying me kind of over his shoulders, um, kind of gave a completely different message, okay? So if you can imagine a shark, uh, you know, the, the, the top half of my body and then a shark carrying my limb with fake legs coming off the side here, um, the shark head is in an interesting spot, we'll say. And it just doesn't look right. It just doesn't look okay to people. Uh, and uh, so I was getting some glares, okay? So I was like, okay, lesson learned. This is a family costume only, right? Do not wear this. Do not attempt to wear this uh, without your family, also in shark costumes. Because when your family's there, then it's like, oh, cute, they're all sharks, and the daddy's a shark too. Isn't that cute? But when you walk around by yourself, you're just a dude with a shark dick, essentially. You don't want to have a giant shark head dick walking around and, you know, it, even creepier is that I had like these pink legs, like I had these Caucasian fake legs dangling off the side. And, uh, you know, it just, if you just think about like a shark dick and like a pair of pink tubes staying, you know, off to the side, it just wasn't a good look for me. Um, so I kind of learned that lesson, right? So fast forward to, to last night, um, my wife wears her shark costume to, to school. Um, and, you know, it, it does okay. It doesn't quite get the reaction she was hoping. <laughs> Let's you know you're going to bite them. Oh, my God, it's Shark Dick. Let's get his autograph. <laughs> Pretty much, right? Um, <laughs> wait, uh, yeah. Um, so she wears a costume to school. Costume, her costume isn't particularly comfortable. I guess it's itchy or something. There's, like, some problems with it. So she doesn't uh, – uh, so she, she texts me and says, you know what, I'm not going to wear the shark costume tonight. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so I'm, like, wondering, okay, what are we going to wear? And, she, and I'm, you know, because if, if the boys are still going to wear a shark costume, I'll still wear a shark costume. Uh, they also were not going to be wearing their shark costumes. So shark dick is out. You know, autographs are not. Shark dick is done. Uh, so now – I have to go and uh, – so now I'm going to go wear just a regular skeleton T-shirt, which is okay. It was kind of a letdown, you know. We were so amped about this whole, you know, let's be shark things for Halloween that I thought it was going to be super cool. Um, we just – you know, at the end of the day, it uh, it wasn't quite quite what we were hoping for. My son, for you know, but still, my son had a good time. My four-year-old, he had a good time. He got some good candy. Um, I found out that if you have – my one-year-old is allergic to peanuts. And so if you have a kid that's allergic to peanuts on Halloween, it's a little bit scary, but you get a lot of candy. Like as an adult, you get a shitload of candy. So grab the sensor bar. <laughs> that's funny. Actually, yeah, if I'd walked out with a sensor bar on, that would have been nothing short of amazing. <laughs> it's a good one. Um, but, you know, kind of a letdown. I was hoping, you know, we could all enjoy the really cool shark costumes together one more time uh, trick-or-treating. But uh, it just didn't pan out that way. And, in fact, I guess it was okay. Um, <laughs> I am at it hard. <laughs> I love peanuts. Yeah, I love peanuts too. But so I have this whole. Apparently, you know, after we did the weeded out all the peanut stuff, um, I now have all these peanuts uh, in a bag in my car. So I brought those into the office today, and everybody had peanut-related candy in the office. So, so there's you know there's some bright side to it. Overall, though. I feel a little bit bummed. I was hoping that, uh, you know, we could enjoy a little more Halloween festivities as sharks. But, hey, you know, could have, could have been worse, right? My kid could have actually gotten a hold of some of those peanuts and could have spent uh, Halloween in the emergency room, which would have not been fun. So, right? So you got to count your blessings, friends. <laughs> I can't eat peanuts at all. I could die. Holy crap. See, I don't think my son's allergy is that bad because we used to give him kind bars 
and uh, he broke. That's how we found out. Like we were giving them kind bars, and uh, you know he broke out in hives, and you know it was just kind of a he was just kind of really really irritable for actually the space of about a couple of weeks. And we couldn't figure out what went, what was going on. We we took him to the doctor. The doctor was like, "Oh, it's just a rash. It's no big deal." And we're like, "Are you sure? Because this kind of seemed like an allergy, dude." Um, did you want Daddy to dress as Shark Dick tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's you know. Oh, Albert, I was gonna say. Yeah. Yeah, that that's more like a discussion mommy and daddy might have, but uh, no, we're not we're not doing shark chick. <laughs> anyway, okay, TMI, fine, I get it, but uh, yeah, Halloween was okay. Could have been a little bit better, like I said, but it was okay. Let's give our guy his purple pants. So there's actually uh <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, I had to go get a new laptop because that last Windows ten update basically was this the equivalent of of uh lighting my laptop on fire, essentially. Like I could have lit it on fire and then just like backed off and watched it die. Uh so yeah. Okay, purple pants. Look at that. We did we did a we did a thing, folks. We are cooking tonight. Um, yeah. Gosh. And then as a follow up to the whole filthy normie Halloween thing, I saw more pictures of the the like the the baby. She showed me more pictures of when I asked her about it. The filthy normie um, Beetlejuice idea, which I thought was a great idea of like, oh yeah, and, you know, here's my boyfriend, and her boyfriend was like dressed. He was he he was just wearing a pair of freaking aviators. That was it. That was his costume. He was wearing a pair of freaking aviators at night, and he was supposed to be that guy from Narcos. I think I think we went over this already, right? I think we did. We probably did. So, anyways. Normies don't do Halloween. Yeah, you just F up everything. Oh, gosh. I think you're still talking about your uh, peanut allergy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that happened. I don't know. There's this weird... It sounds like um, I'm getting a little scratching on the inside of my uh, uh, my my headset. Do you guys... Are you guys hearing any kind of weird feedback or anything like that? I would like to know these things as we are trying, not saying we're succeeding, but we're trying to consistently get better with the quality, the production quality <laughs> of this show. And I can't say production quality without laughing because uh, it is pretty damn funny. So anyway, let's go ahead and rock this. Uh, da 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 play smart what the crap whatever yeah um no oh the windows update okay whoa people i don't know if that's that's just i don't know what's going on with my phone but like, every time a notification is coming in now, it's like, ah, notification. Okay. And dude has a green shirt and vest, right? So we're just going to hit a little tiny little stripe of green in there. A little stripe. Oh, that's a lot of green. Oops. Let's see. Uh, might have to thin this a little bit more. Uh, no. So yeah, we're constantly trying to improve the quality of the show. And, you know, when I was shopping for laptops and paying my property taxes, <laughs> like some hard choices came in front of me. You know, I was like, 
is it really like I could I could um oh I'd love to give you information on Bushido Blade Wolf, but I don't I don't have it. I want to learn myself. I want to learn more about Bushido's too. Uh, we could do that. Anyway, so as I'm doing this, as I'm like specking out what kind of laptop I need and all this kind of stuff, I started to think, you know, in reality, my backup, that backup shitty laptop I've been running that can support one camera and like lags and maybe can hold up a web page long enough for me to do a live stream, like, if I had to, if I had to, I could pull back and be responsible and not have to buy another laptop for, give it a month or so, right? I could I could hold on for a month and just kind of get by and, uh, you know, and then when the time came and I had the money, then I could go get myself a better laptop. But, uh, you know that's the that's the thing I was thinking. Like we were, I was discussing this with a a friend the other day because uh, we were talking about streaming and you know maybe getting um, getting to a point where well I think I think uh, my friend's situation is different because they're trying to I think they're they're a little more invested in you know making this into um, I. I I don't know if it's the word the correct word is career, but they're like kind of I guess so. I guess it would be career because it would be their their like their main occupation, right? Um you sound good. Try OBS Studio it might help with the problems you're having with the live shows. It it, it you know, it now's the time, so I should probably definitely I'll do that this weekend, Demon Jester J. I'll I'll try it out and I'll see if it's actually better for multiplayer online because I want to do multiplayer stream that goes to this page and to Twitch at the same time. I don't have a problem with, with multiplayer on YouTube. It's simulcasting to that and Twitch, which I know is a tall order, but I still want to try to somehow get there. Um, and so the other streamer, I, like I said, was talking about was like, oh, well, you know, this, um, they really want to make it kind of their career, kind of their, their money maker. So, and I get that. Um, and so, you know, there, it's, it's at a, you're kind of at a crossroads because, um, like a lot of us, when we started YouTube, we started it as a hobby. You know, we started and I, I definitely started it as a hobby. I don't even quite understand to this day why, <laughs> why I still, uh, you know, why I started doing YouTube in the first place, other than the fact that my brother asked me to uh, record a, a video for him, uh, and we wanted to watch some videos. Bottom line is, you know, when I started this channel, the whole idea was I would just leave things on this channel um, that were things that that uh, I wanted to watch, and maybe a couple of people close to me might want to watch. They might want to just hear me rambling about something, um, or they might want to just catch up and see, okay, what is he painting? Um, that kind of thing, right? And it's cool for me to kind of just catch up too. It's like, I, I'll admit, like, I actually watch this, I watch my channel a fair bit, like, because it's, it's cool to, like, go back and, especially the games, I'll go back and watch the games. Like, I'll go back and watch the Guild Ball games and go, oh, well, that was fun. Like, you know, what could have happened in that game or even the board game stuff, it's just fun to watch this, like, uh, dicking around and laughing about stuff on the board. The board game streams were are super fun. They're like some of my favorite things, and I hope that we can continue to do those. Um, I want to also like once you know once we kind of can put the Ninja All Stars campaign on hold for a bit. Um, I want to get back to like uh, maybe teaching some tabletop games and stuff. Uh, on that Friday night fiasco thing. Oh, God. This did not thin very well. I'm getting spots. Yeah, I'm getting spots. I could, I could try building it slow. That's what I'm going to have to do. Wow. 
Wow. Let me get us through this color. What's weird is that I'll show you the... Whoa. This color is kind of a rosy purple. Um, and I'm going to show you what the uh, the studio art looks like because they kind of use this kind of purple. They're using two different purples, and they use the rosy purple on the jacket. And I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if that's right. Okay. So right now they look like kind of the same uh uh they look like kind of the same purple. But we'll fix that. Oh, cool. Can you get your show back up and going? That's cool. I do like, uh, I do love other people's, uh, like, streams. Um, you know, like I said, um, I like Dice, uh, Dice Painting Miniature Guy. He's kind of on a, uh, a, like, a time off type thing. And then, you know, I love my girl Dizzy Stream because she's freaking awesome. Always good to watch. Um, I don't really have a, uh, like, Twitch people that I like to watch yet. I don't know. I've been trying to watch some Twitch people, but, uh, I, I think so far I don't understand it. Like, I don't understand what the appeal is for some of the Twitch people, if I'm being completely honest with you guys. I don't get it. Anyway... <laughs> And it's it's because it's kind of what I'm talking about tonight. This concept of um okay, well, there are streamers, there are people that that do YouTube for hobby, and then there are people that do YouTube professionally, right? And um and I don't want to knock one or the other. You know, I just want to point out some differences in them. I don't know, I feel like this should have some purple in it. So, we're just going for it. Um I just I feel that there is a difference there and I feel like sometimes we kind of lose sight of that. Like at least I do. Like I lose sight of this concept that there are people that kind of treat YouTube like they they, you know, like like their career. Um and it's 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 different for me because I have a different career, you know. Um so I just have to bear that in mind. But the interesting thing for me is, like, I'm at this situation where, you know, I do my hobby, and that and that does involve YouTube and, and that kind of stuff. Um, I do my hobby, but I also, like, there there is also a bit of enterprise involved here, you know? That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, right? You know, you, you can see there's Play It Painted merch. We have... Uh, and, you know, I have a, a fairly – oh, gosh, why did I do that? <laughs> it's okay. I have a, you know, I have a fairly active uh, commission service going on. Um, and I just want to be real with that. Why am I so low? That's what I want to know. I should, should I be like that? It seems like on the YouTube stream, like I'm way low. Anyways, I'm just doing a little extra color on, color work on this guy. Um, you know what I mean? So there is there is a difference, in my opinion. There is sort of um, the hobbyists, and then you have the the professional streamers. And the problem, the issue I have is that it's such a it seems like such a divide. You know, there and, and the skill set is different. It's almost like in order for me to um, to to be a little more towards the the professional side of streaming. That my skill set is is going to be more focused on, um, you know, having a good graphical graphic interface for the stream for Twitch, having you know the widgets and understanding my sound and my editing and all that stuff better, but it's like, but it's also like less painting. 
I should be doing less painting for some reason. And I, I, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just been my perception. It's like I watch some of these, um, some of the bigger streamers on Twitch, and I'm like, you know, we've been on for like an hour, and there's almost no painting going on. And I was like, well, it, there's a lot of banter, and there's usually like a co-host, and for some reason they're talking about food almost all the time, um, and vaping. I don't know. That's a thing. Um, and I just don't understand. Okay, I'm going to mix a little bit of violet ink into this because I do want this to be a little bit darker. Um, and I just, I, when I was watching, I was like, I just didn't understand what it was, really. Like, what is this stream? Because it's, um, it's a painting stream, but there's, you know, the actual painting, the actual painting that's going on is, like, really, really few and far between. I don't know. It could also be, though, that, that you know, really high-quality painters, and I know this is true of, um, like, some of my favorite channels, um, the really high-quality painters also take their, their time and, and do shit right, and they do it really well. So I'm definitely not going to knock that. Like, mad respect for that, but, um, but yeah, I don't know. On Twitch, I was just confused, like, because it seemed like, okay, these guys aren't really doing much in terms of actual painting here, so it had me, had me confused. Um, if you're going movie look, you need a Barney purple. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm following, let me show you what I'm following. I'm following this. And the purple, you can see the the purple there, it's like a rosier purple on the jacket. And it's a darker violet purple on the pants. So you can see I kind of have, uh, once I shade it down, I'll, I'll have the correct purple on both of those. <laughs> Cheddar Monkey says, what's up, man? YouTube and Twitch are separate ecosystems. Don't cross the streams, lol. <laughs> Well, I do have, we are simulcasting to Twitch right now, but I just, um, because I don't have a schedule, like my Twitch growth has been nothing um, other than, you know, some really good friends like Blade Wolf and some other you, some of you other guys that are like, yeah, I'll throw you a follow on Twitch. Um, yeah, I, I have to, the strategy is different for Twitch. It's like I have to get a good UI. I have to, and I have to get a schedule and I have to stick with it. Um, these are not things I'm opposed to. It's just right now, that's a totally different thing. Like YouTube is cool because I'm like, well, I'm going to get, you know, this many people are going to tune in and I'm good with that. And it doesn't really matter. As long as a few people that turn, tune in to my YouTube are happy with it, then I'll continue to do it. Um, but, you know, like I said, th there's another side to me. Before, if you were to ask me this five, six years ago, I'd say, no, I don't want to make any money off streaming. I don't want any money off streaming. This is my hobby. I love doing this. I don't even, like back then, I was like, I don't even want to make money painting miniatures. I used to paint for other people, but I would I would always like paint for trade. Like, oh, I'll trade you some things and I'll paint some of your minis. Um, I was doing stuff like that, or I was doing that stuff like that as a favor, like my extra life stuff. I'd be like, well, I'll paint a, a full set of Super Dungeon Explorer, and we'll raffle that off for extra life, and that'll be cool. So I was doing stuff like that, but you know, it wasn't until I had my my firstborn that I was like, no, it's you know, it's, the rules are different now. I gotta I gotta think of my family first, and so it does have to take on a little bit of a business aspect to it. You know, that's just the reality. I just have to I just have to accept that. And so, you know, we branded the whole Play It Painted thing. And a lot of that, I would say about 75% of that was for fun. Um, it, uh, because I was like, you know, it was me and Phil and uh, at the time, and, and uh, my brother at the time, and, and we said, let's, you know what, let's just do cool things. Let's have, um, let's do shirts, because we, we wanted to have cool shirts. And... <laughs> You know, and the banner, I love the banner. 
it was like the, I don't know the banner has meaning. It's like we we wanted to have the banner because it's just cool to show up to a show. We did this at Comic Con a, a number of years ago, and then like all the other like the actual professional companies call, kind of followed suit. So now when you go into the gaming room at, at Comic Con, you have all these banners in there. Whereas before we were the only banner in there um, uh, when we were SoCal Malifo, and then you know, so now. Uh, so now we have a uh, a banner, and then we did uh, um, obviously we did T-shirts, uh, we did uh, dice, uh, I did patches. Patches were really cool, but uh, we did widgets. We're doing widgets. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, I have what I call YouTube friends. Some are big and some are not. I help them get bigger. It matters what your niche is. Yeah, I I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I don't. I consider my YouTube friends like like you guys that pop on and watch the the painting streams and whatever. Like you guys are, I would consider you pretty much on the same level as my quote unquote real life friends. You know the the guys that I I game with all the time. There might be some differences, obviously, because you know I have uh, I have longer rapport and longer history with some friends than others. And um, I don't know, some people it's just kind of the the consequence of being a normal human being you, you develop unique relationships with people but what i'm trying to say is like overall i would say you guys are my friends um in fact like i think almost everybody is like a facebook everybody here is like a facebook friend of mine or they should be and if you're not send me the request and say hey asshole you said we were friends on your stream <laughs> right because like well does it make sense that i'm that i'm facebook friends with some some person I, I went to high school with but never even hung out with, but I'm not Facebook friends with you guys, and I see you guys like at least two or three times a week. That's bullshit, man. <laughs> hey, man, friend me. Yeah, send it. Send me the thing, dude. Oh, yeah. I, it just, I don't know. I don't, that's what this whole, that's what this is. It's just, it's not like, I don't know. I don't have fucking fans. We just like hang out. We just <laughs> We do the damn, we do the damn thing, right? It doesn't, I don't know. It uh, it shouldn't really. Uh, I I don't draw that kind of distinction because, frankly, you know, I'm not trying to get. I don't want to have like thousands of of um, you know, if I did by accident, they would be purely by accident. But if I did have an outrageous number of people following me around and then it became cumbersome to the point where like, okay, I can't really be friends with everybody. Then I might have to start drawing some lines and I wouldn't be happy about that either because it'd be like, you know, I don't want to be a dick that's like, oh, well, this person's my buddy, but this person is not because, I don't know, titties or whatever. <laughs> titties is a good reason, but we don't <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> uh so let's see. Uh I click follow for you and Diz both on Twitch. Thanks, Cheddar Monkey Man. Thank you, sir. Uh Demon Jester J says it's all about timing, what time you post to start. So I know I gotta get a schedule down. I'm thinking Wednesday night is a good night for me to basically guarantee that I will be simulcasting here and Twitch. I think Wednesday night. I think Wednesday night will be our night my friends we will i will for sure i think that's how we're gonna have to do it like we get the wednesday night we'll be or maybe the monday night Fuck. we gotta figure this out <laughs> okay monday night let's call it monday night right yeah we'll call it monday night monday night i'll do a paint stream we'll start it at 9 30 p.m pacific and uh and i'll just commit to it we'll just do it um and then, obviously, Thursday night is game night, so we'll have games on stream. You guys know that. Uh, so that usually starts earlier. That start that can start as early as 5 p.m. Pacific, but more likely like 6 p.m. If you turn in around 6 p.m. Pacific, you'll catch a game. You'll catch whatever we're playing. Uh, and so that's cool. And then... Uh, Friday night, obviously, we have the Friday Night Fiasco. Oh, I'm loving that name. Friday Night Fiasco. It's so, so much fun. I went and I made a playlist. 
for both the Thursday night games and the Friday night games. So if you guys want to go back and watch anything, you can totally do that. I just like how things are – those particular – the gaming aspect is really starting to evolve on my channel. Um, about a year ago, I was sort of lamenting this idea that, you know, this channel is called Play It Painted. We're doing a lot of the painted part, but we're not doing a lot of the playing part. So it was, it was kind of an intentional thing for ne – what happened to Friday Night Fappening? <laughs> Well, I guess that's sort of the unofficial title of uh <laughs> of the Friday night games. But uh but yeah, um I'm really kind of proud about that. Proud of that because we did on this feed, I did used to say, "Hey, I would love to be able to get back to a point where we're streaming games and uh, we're having fun and uh we're just playing the games we want to play and uh and I wanted to play more board games and I wanted to kind of have more cuz like Thursday nights Thursday nights will pretty much be focused on the miniature games. We'll be focused on Batman, Guild Ball, Wrath of Kings, you know, the miniature probably Relic Knights when that comes out. Um that's Thursday. Friday night is going to be more board gaming, Ninja Division stuff. Um and you know, and it's just going to be that's going to be like the obnoxious little thing that we do Friday nights, uh, and it's super fun. Um, my original intention with the whole Cheddar Monkey thing is I was going to be a competitive gamer in the Destiny scene, but life things and whatnot get in the way, and it fell through. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, you have the name, and you can always pick it up later, right? This, uh, You guys don't know this, but the original name of this channel was called um, was called the Ebon Star, okay, and that was, and it, it, that was actually based on a, an MMO character I had developed, and uh, and also I, then I found out later Ebon Star was used as a, uh, like a, a spaceship name in Star Wars or some something like that. Um, that's purely coincidental. They copied me, guys. <laughs> anyway, but that was, but Ebon Star had had been my. Um, like my internet tag for a number of years, for quite a long time. Um, like it, if you guys remember the old Tau Online forums, you know, the, the 40K guys, um, I was Ebon Star on, on that. No, I w I'm sorry. No, I wasn't. I was not. Hold on, I take it back. I was not. I was Ariel of Iandin, um on the, the old uh, 40K forums. And, uh, um, and I was an admin uh I, I modded the um, the Eldar forms, and then I was an admin there. But then I, you know, I had the the other tag Ebonstar, which I would use on all the MMOs and stuff I would play. And then when I started this channel, you know, I I, I was called the Eb it was called the Ebonstar channel for a, the first like three or four years, I think. Um, and I had a segment on this channel called Play It Painted. Okay, and and the segment was. Um, uh, was me um, painting and playing games that I hadn't played before. Like we played Dead Man's Hand and we played Deep Wars and we played, uh, shoot, so many. We played like a dozen different games. Saga, uh, Inner Majesty's Name, we played Dystopian Legions. We played all kinds of stuff because we, you know, this was after we kind of quit Malifaux. And we were looking, we were, my gaming group were shopping for new games. And so it was like, well, let's just make it a segment, right? Let's just, um, let's just do that. Let's just call it Play It Painted because that's what, what I did. And then also um, Play It Painted included board games as well. Uh, so, uh, and, and then I think a year later, Muse on Min Minis or whatever, they did a campaign for War Machine called Play It Painted. Um, and it was, again, totally coincidental. I think they might have noticed that when they tried to, like, open the website, playitpainted.com, that somebody already owned the domain, um, because that's that's where I was going at the time, was that, uh, you know, the Ebon Star channel was kind of meh, uh, and I wanted, the, I wanted to have a new focus for the channel. Right. The, the the original focus of the channel was sort of Malifaux mainly, 
and then whatever else I happen to be working on or rambling about, like miniature bags, ter tabletop terrain, my opinions on all kinds of shit. <laughs> and, uh, oh, damn, why did I do that? Oh, well, uh, I was going to, I should have used that green on that other model, but who cares? Um, yeah, so I did that for a while. And then, you know, when it was time to kind of, when I really embraced this idea that um, I was going to not spend money on my hobby and I was going to try to be responsible for my kids, that was when I was like, okay. Um, and, you know, and Phil was on board with that too because he was like, I'm going to have a kid. I'm going to have a son too. And, uh, and I kind of got Phil more into this idea of like, okay, we're going to do commission painting and we're going to also, we're going to flip kits. Flipping kits on eBay was kind of a cool deal because if you could do it fast enough and efficiently enough, like you could turn a reasonable profit if you do it enough times. Um, so we kind of got Phil into that. Um, and Phil was just like super talented at uh, like putting together our logos and I told him what I wanted for branding and that kind of stuff. And uh, so every logo, every plate painted logo, and I think we've had four, kind of four distinct different ones, um, he designed. Uh, so everything that's on our banner, everything that's on our t-shirts and our, we even have, um, like we even have like polos. We have like polos and we have like baseball shirts. Like we have crazy shit, man. The absolutely coolest Play it painted piece of uh, of merch though. Sorry, I'm drinking. Is um uh, is uh, um the coin. Um, let's see. No regrets though. I met so many cool peeps through all of it, including all of y'all. Of course, man. It's good stuff. It's it's really awesome when you make friends like online or whatever. Because they end up being at least as good friends as your other friends, man. Like the, the people that were in my guild for Ultima Online and all that shit, like we're like lifelong friends. Those guys are like, well, you know, those guys are fucking hardcore. And we're com completely different people, completely different backgrounds. You know, uh, like one of my closest buddies, he's uh, he he lives in Kentucky, you know, and he's a... Uh, you know, for lack of a better term, like he's kind of a like a yokel hick dude. Hey, what's up, got him? Um, you know, he, he he lives a totally different lifestyle, kind of like a biker, like a biker yokel dude. Just got a thick, thick Southern accent, you know. Uh, and uh, like, like he straight up told me, like we're brothers, like <laughs> in that type of accent, like we're brothers. I'll, I'll take a bu I'll take a bullet for you, brother. <laughs> I was like, damn, that's a lot. Of... I was like, I was like, could I say that back? <laughs> I'm like, I'm a, I'm a coward. I'm a, I'm a city person. We're, we're cowards. <laughs> Let me see that joke. I'm like, I haven't done anything on the face yet, buddy. We're still working on it. Um, but yeah, like you can, you know, you form bonds like that. And uh, like that, they're legit, man. You. Those are your those are people. Like people that it yeah, it's a fucking it's a YouTube channel and some people get like weird about it, like, oh yeah, you know, so people follow me online. I have these followers. Like, what like what the fuck what are you talking about, man? Like I guess at a at a point it might get to you. Like if you had like I don't know, hundred thousand subs and you were like a, a thing and you kind of did this for a living, I guess so. Because, so, or, or if, you know, uh, if you were a, if you were a, a female, then you got to be careful. Like, you can't have, you can't be, unfortunately, like, you can't be, like, quite as open as a dude can be, right? I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Like, there could be some dudes that, like, get molested as a, I like that term, molested. They got molested as a, uh, as for being a a quote unquote YouTube celeb. I, I guess that could happen. I don't really, I can't think of an instance where that might have happened. But uh, okay, um, 
friends. Let me see that. Okay. I wish I had an accent. But you, you know what I'm saying. So, like, like I have some friends that are very different from me because of uh, online, just online stuff, not necessarily YouTube. Um, I have some friends that are, you know, friends that I know from YouTube. Uh, and then I have the friends that, like, just the people that you grew up with, people that uh, your family grew up with, your family friends or whatever. But why should your YouTube friends really be any different? I mean, they're, like I was just saying, like, we interact, I would say I interact with you guys more than uh, a lot of my, my quote-unquote, like, real-life friends. So that's what it is, you know. Um, and then the people that I work with and stuff, like, it, it, I do find it a little odd, like, if they were to end up watching my shit here would be a little bit odd. Uh, it's happened a couple of times, though, like, um, where, you know, somebody at work knows, like, oh, you know, he does he does miniature gaming. Um, it's always a little bit weird when that crosses over, because, you know, you kind of, you kind of have to have that professional acumen at work. You can't, it's it's not as easy as like oh yeah sure I th you know I golf on the weekends and I'm like no I paint miniatures and shit and we put it on YouTube and fucking play Batman like it, <laughs> it's not quite the not quite the same conversation you know um, but that said you know uh, the friends that you make online it you can be as close to them as you want you can cl be you can be as close to them as you choose and in fact you know if you want my if you want the truth here, there are so, I've ha I've made some friends online, on, over the internet, that have become extremely valuable to me, um, because they're uh, they're confidants. Okay, like like you can there's it it's safe to sh share shit with people um, that. Uh, that you meet online, and if you have, you know, there's obviously you got to be, you got to like vet this stuff. You have to properly vet it. You can't just, oh, you're gonna be, okay. Well, I'll have I have a story for you, nerd. I do have a story for you, and I'm gonna tell you guys this because I don't care, right? Because I don't care. Um. Okay, so this had to do with me being. Let's let's rewind about. We'll call it. Was it 12, 13 years? Yeah, like that far ago, for that that long time ago, 12, 13 years ago. Okay, I was a a young single man, um, and uh, you know, trying to climb up that corporate ladder and be the responsible human being. God help us all, right? Uh, so I was trying to be that dude, and um, so I I did a lot of traveling for work in those days um, and uh, be all over the place, mostly in the state in the country mostly, but like uh, uh, Chicago, which I actually am going to be in Chicago, it looks like in a few weeks or so, uh, Chicago, Seattle, Miami, um, Arizona, you know, I, I'd bounce around, Dallas, um, yeah, I, I, I see a lot of the country, um, but anyways, Oh, uh, I was in the, I was in Miami once. I was coming home from a trip, and uh, I was uh, like at the airport at like six in the morning, uh, waiting to get on a noon flight. Was it a noon flight? No, no, no. It was like a nine a.m. flight or some shit, right? So I'm in Miami International Airport, and uh, you know we're we're in the terminal. We're waiting there. Uh, we're everybody's minding their own business and. Um, and then suddenly, you know, the uh, the gate agent comes on and she says, "Hey guys, sorry to tell you this, but our flight is going to be delayed about six hours." It's like, damn, six hours! Oh my god! So, uh, <laughs> the burst. Uh, one fun time in the country park where they live fast and they scared of dark. <laughs> yes, the Fresh Prince. Um, so I had six hours to kill. Six hours to kill, and I was really, really in the fight club back during these days. And so I decided I was going to make a single-serving friend because I did that occasionally. When you're by yourself, you're a single man, 
you just go out, you make friends, you just you just do it. I don't know, maybe maybe you don't do it, but I do it. Um, and so I picked someone. I picked this. Uh, um, I picked a young lady about my. I you know kind of sized her up. She's about my age, barely. She was okay. I'd say she was somewhat attractive. You know, we were within that range of attraction, but it wasn't a. It wasn't like a a hit. Like it wasn't like a come on, right? I just. Uh, yeah, Chuck Palahniuk. Yeah, dude, love Palahniuk. Um, anyway, so I just kind of pulled her out of the crowd and I said, "Hey, you are going to be my best friend for the next six hours." And <laughs> and yeah, this shit worked. I don't know how or why it worked, but it worked. And I told her that, and I said, "Hey, we're going to be friends for the next six hours. We're going to be best friends for the next six hours." And we kind of laid out the, we, you know, and she thought I was. She thought it was funny or whatever, and but I said no, 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 no. We are going to be friends, best friends for the next six hours, and we had ground rules. And the ground rules were she was allowed because we were best friends. She was allowed to ask me anything she wanted, and I had to tell her the truth. Okay, so no matter what she asked me, I had to tell her the truth. Um, and uh, uh, and and so we had no secrets, uh, and and that was the deal. But the minute we were not in each other's physical presence, then show's over, right? We're done. We're, we go back to being whatever the hell people we were prior to this encounter, um, and uh, you know we don't really know each other anymore. That was the deal. So we did that for six hours. We had breakfast together. Um, you know, we shared a lot of weird stories. She got to know like like she got to know about my hobby pretty immediately because I had a fucking white dwarf in my backpack. <laughs> So I'm like, look, here's how weird it gets. Here you go. And I handed her the white dwarf, and she looked at it, and she's like, these are beautiful, and all this other kind of stuff. Um, but that that happened, right? And so we're get, finally getting on the plane. Six hours later, we're getting on the plane, and um, she pulls some strings, as pretty girls do. Like, pretty girls can do all kinds of shit that they want. Plus, they can fit in middle seats on a plane. That's a big bonus, right? Because, like, as a dude, you really want that aisle seat. Right, you got to get that aisle seat. One, so you can get up and take a piss anytime you like. Two, because even a dude like me, I'm not a big dude, but I got broad shoulders. Like I don't want to be in the middle seat, like crunched up and like huddled up like that. I feel like when I see like six foot dudes like have to fold themselves into a seat, a middle seat like that, I get for like for just like a tiny like a microsecond, I get a little bit jealous. I mean, not jealous, but like I feel a little bit of, of sympathy for them. But I don't most of the time, all right? Because it's statistically proven that tall guys have it fucking better than the rest of us. <laughs> so anyway, there's there's my there's my contribution to tonight's pettiness. Um, so she pulled some strings, and she sat next to me. She's like, okay, we're still on. I was like, okay, that's fine. Th- those were the rules. Physical presence, we're still on. So uh, we took the flight. It connected over in Denver. Um, she lived in Colorado, uh, so she got off at that flight. I went home, um, and uh, you know, and then after that, we kind of modified the deal a little bit more. Okay, so the deal <laughs> six one six foot one mofo over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, you statistically have it better. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm not saying that you do, but statistically, I don't know. Um, so we modified the deal a little bit, right? I, and I would, con- we would continue to write to each other. We would continue to kind of, but um, so it, it went from being like a single serving friend to an online friend who was really a bit like kind of like a confidant, right? Somebody that you could tell anything to. You just completely unfiltered, like completely uncensored with this person. You can tell her anything. And um uh and I did. Like anything anything that, that I felt like sharing, I shared with her. Um and it was great because we were we were online we were physically separated. She couldn't use that information or anything like that. Uh, to harm me, like to threaten my 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 life or my job or 
my relationships or anything like that. And I and I told her basically everything, whatever she wanted to know. Um, and it was a really good relationship. <laughs> See, nuh -uh, random people always recruit me to grab shit from the top shelf for them at the supermarket. <laughs> <sighs> okay, okay. If it's that bad, we'll we'll let you we'll let we'll let it slide, sir. We get it. It can be it can be hard to be the tall guy sometimes, but can it? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm just going to continue to mess with you. Um, but yeah, it was that was good. And that was an online, it was essentially an online relationship. Um, and that lasted for, uh, it lasted for a few years, honestly. Like, that's what we did. And uh, uh, like, she knew everything. She knew all the dirt. Um, and it was it, totally safe. She Oh wait, we got another we got another tall person. I don't know, man. Six foot four, and skinny as heck. I was gonna I was gonna um, uh, edit your comment to skinny as fuck, but I don't know. If you don't use language like that, that's fine. <laughs> Sucks getting clothes that fit. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, you guys. Fine. It's not always sunshine and rainbows for tall dudes. <laughs> I'm just I got a little Napoleonic complex going on here. Okay, forgive me. <laughs> anyway, um, mediums. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I got that damn Tom Cruise syndrome. But anyway, um, so like she knew all the dirt on me, and you know she was always threatening, like, "Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, be together again. We're gonna be together again. We're gonna be best friends again because the rules are on again." If we are in each other's physical presence, I don't think it made that much of a dis difference at this juncture because it's sort of look at that paint bottle rolling through here. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, so she wanted to do that, and then sure enough, like three years later, we ran into each other um, at the airport again, like kind of randomly. Like she found me back at the the uh, Denver airport. And we had lunch together, and and you know, again the rules were in they were enforced. Like whatever she wanted to know, she could know. Um, but it, my point is, it, it was really, it, in some ways, it was a really kind of cool, kind of healthy relationship because like I could tell her anything as a single guy. It was like, you know, I wanted to, you know, if I met somebody and uh, you know had intentions or whatever, I could tell her about it. Um, she actually tried meeting up with me several times and I, like she, she, uh, she was, she went on a trip to Vegas or whatever and wanted to meet, wanted me to come down, like drive down and, and meet her there. Um, and I was, you know, kind of with somebody at the time. And so it just seemed kind of not okay to do that. And it was, it kind of sucks because that was kind of a letdown because I kind of hinted like, oh yeah, I'll come meet you. But then I was not. So I was kind of a dick. Um, let's see. I'm 5'9". Okay, we're still going to talk about height. Fuck the story. Here we go. <laughs> I'm 5'9", but I wish I were taller. 5'9 is okay. I think the, you know, I think the the, uh, the cutoff most women are looking at like 5'10". Like 5'10 is a good good height. Six Six feet. Or like you know, right there, six feet, six feet, six one. It's usually good. Like you get a broader range of of uh, uh, potential partners at that height. Uh, let's see. Uh, I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish it was a ball. I wish I had a girl who looked good. How call? I love that song. Nice reference, dude. Love it. Good one. Uh, no, you don't, Cheddar Monkey. I'm five nine two, and I'm the tallest of my family. I don't know. I, I yeah, five nine's a good height, man. It's okay. I think so. But yeah, <laughs> we are really just going to be talking about height tonight, aren't we? That don't bother me, none. It's just interesting. 
Heath, Heath Ledger Joker. Yeah. Here's the problem. <laughs> I, I'm only 5'7 and black. I'm a pygmy by male standards. <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> Blade Wolf, I am also, I'm 5'7, but I have poofy hair. So most people think I'm like 5'10. It's weird. Like, uh, I went through this phase where um, I was dating only girls that were taller than me. <laughs> so, uh, so I I dated, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so I dated girls that were taller than me, but none of them realized that they were taller than me. It was weird. Like, I um, dated one girl who was like five ten. She was five ten. She didn't realize she was taller than me. She's like, wait a minute, you're five seven? Yeah. She's like, you seem taller. You seem taller than than that. And I was like, it's probably my poofy hair. Um, and my wife too, because she <laughs> she used to say like, oh, I, don't know, I only want to date guys like five eleven or taller, right? <laughs> right. And when I met her, she was like, I thought you were taller. <laughs> She's five three five two five two five three one of those so with with uh, with girls it's the opposite right you don't want to be the tall girl it's harder it's harder to be it's harder to find dudes when you're the tall girl because one like shorter dudes kind of have a complex like we're not we're a little nervous about you know trying to meet up with a girl like significantly taller than us. Uh, and two, like straight up, and girls don't like. They don't want to be the tall one in the relationship. They want to. So if you're like five nine, five ten as a girl, you 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 want to have a six foot boyfriend. You know. Listen, if my face is at chest height, I think about it. <laughs> Remember, short people have high hopes. <laughs> We're just gonna we're just gonna form our own Napoleonic complex club. <laughs> and you know what, you tall dudes in the chat, you can join. You can join just join and share your woes about having to pull shit off the top shelf and find clothes that fit you and all that kind of stuff. You can join. We wouldn't be we wouldn't be uh like upset. Just come in and make sure you have woes, though. I think that's all. That's all. You could be part of the club. Just, like, be ready to sing the blues and shit with us. Um, did you know that the Joker are both and Batman are both six feet tall? Sounds about right. Nah, I'm not looking at your chest. I'm looking at you. <laughs> I love this feed. <laughs> Okay, uh, so here's the interesting thing. We got to figure out. Let's look at this dude's face. Okay, so we want it. We want to make it look like he's wearing makeup. So I think the the best way to do this would be to kind of start with a, what I typically do is I'll paint a face that doesn't have makeup on it, and then I'll add the makeup to it. <laughs> what the crap? That was what you guys got out of my story was tall. That's what you got. That's that's what that's the hill that we're dying on is tall. That's really got to get sloppy with his face. Yeah, we're going to we we'll do a a little like dry brushing or stippling or something. But right now I want to get like let's do an actual face. I don't know why I do this. I do this with all the Harley miniatures too is I'll paint like I'll actually go in and like paint a a face, like a somewhat realistic face in there, and then I'll come back in and make up it. And it's the only way it makes sense to me is doing something like that. So we're gonna like we're gonna do to give this like the full treatment. The only thing I might not do is I probably won't like close up too much of this uh, uh too much of the 
just the black around the eyes. Probably leave most of that in because it looks correct. Well, there's another issue. It's like that. Ooh. When I do this, it's like the eyes are... When I do this on screen, the eyes are always crooked. Like one's higher than the other one. And it just has to do with, um, you know, your brush landing in the wrong spot on the eye. Right? So it looks like one eye is way bigger than the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually expand the eye. Um, you told... Oh, we were listening to the rest, too. I remember before the rec retcon flash was actually the toss of the core seven Justice, Justice League main members. You told a neat story about meeting people, but mentioned the gripe. This is the internet. <laughs> okay, well played. Jazathoff. Uh, yeah, there's something about a girl who's dating someone, but you had an internet puppy love thing going. I don't even remember why you mentioned me. <laughs> it wasn't even like, it wasn't like, a, um, like that either. It was... Like I said, it was more of a. It, this is a safe person that I can, um, that I can, like, tell them shit that I wouldn't tell people that are standing right next to me. That's what I was getting at, really. Is it? Yeah, you can have. So people kind of undervalue the whole internet friends thing, but I think there's a lot of. I think there, that there's some. Um, that there's some value in this idea that the person is, is so far separated from you and your everyday, your day-to-day -day life that you can, um, that you can, you can share with them. Um, and it's, it's really, really good. When I met my wife, in fact, you know, I, I told her about it. I told my, my little confidant about it. And I told her like how strongly I felt about her. And she gave me some just really good advice, like how to, you know, how to just deal with that. Because, you know, it, it, when I first met my wife, um, she just wasn't, she didn't think she was that into me, which is bullshit because I'm fucking delightful. So I don't even understand what that was about. But anyways, <laughs> let me dot this I or try to. Woo! It's hard to do this on camera. Oh my gosh. You can breathe. You can breathe while you're doing this. No, I didn't do it. Um, introverts tend to be extroverts on the inter interwebs. Um, I met my best friend through podcasting, and he lives in the U.S., so I get what you mean. Where are you from, Jazzatoff? Let me know. Um, that's true. I think that's true. Uh, got him. I think there. I think there are a lot of introverted people in real life that are uh, that are extroverted on the internet. Um, I, you know, when I when I do those personalities like Myers Briggs, Myers Briggs, and that kind of stuff, I these days I, um, I register as extrovert. Like I register as mildly extroverted, which is interesting because like in years past. I would always register as mildly introverted. So I'm always kind of dancing that line there. Trying being four foot all through high school. I was nicknamed the Mighty Midget. I didn't grow until my first year in college. I grew one a, a foot nine inches in a year. Ouch. That would hurt, it sounds like. Oh, you're up in England, man. What's up? Pretty late. Thank you for tuning in, dude. Maybe you don't sleep. I don't know. Oh, the other thing I learned this week. Dude, Cheddar Monkey's still talking about Justice League. <laughs> okay, those are the seven. Extrovert by trade, introvert by nature. Yeah, I think, you know, if I didn't end up with the, the career path I did and, and that kind of stuff, I might be more introverted. But I think I'm by necessity, I'm extroverted. Like, I have to deal with um, with customers. I have to deal with uh, presentations and um you know, I have to speak before large groups of people, do trainings, and that kind of stuff. So I think that's part of it as well. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm all over the map, but 
Yeah, I appreciate you tuning in, man. It's awesome. You're coming in from England. Um, I had a thought there, but we're just going to continue to paint this. I don't know. I, it's in The introvert, extrovert thing, I think because I flip-flop, just kind of depending on the situation, I think that's... I think that's a lot of people, though. I think a lot of people, they just kind of go in and out of whatever, depending on the situation. You don't really sleep. You hadn't caught me live for a while. Yeah, um, so last night I did something super dumb because I was kind of bummed about Halloween. Like, I was kind of underwhelmed by the whole thing, and I, I had a shitty day at work, like, for other reasons, right? So... So when we got back from trick-or-treating last night, um, I decided to try to go to sleep. Like, I could have painted my uh, my Ronin a little bit more. Could have done that. But I was like, no, let's let's go to sleep. So I, you know, so I tried to put myself to sleep. And uh, so I went to sleep at around 9.30 at night. And I woke up around 3 a.m. Because, you know, most of the time, my body's, rocking like three to five hours of sleep uh, a night and it's perfect it's like great for me like especially if i get like right in the four to five hour range absolutely great like i wake up i'm ready to roll that's how the day's gonna be last night i was like oh let's get some extra sleep because reasons and um yeah it hurt my back like i've been in bed too long i got all I got like eight hours worth of sleep, which is ridiculous. Anytime I get over six hours worth of sleep, um, it's just not, it don't do it for me. Like, it, I, I feel sick. Like, if I get, and if I get over eight hours of sleep, I actually do get sick. Like, that's happened to me before. It's like, I oh, know, I'll just get some extra rest. So I'll, I'll get extra rest and end up, like, feeling like absolute garbage. Uh, saw the painted Ronin on your Facebook page. Fox dude looks fully rad. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, I I, I had a lot of fun painting uh, those other Ronin. I still have a batch of four here on my desk that uh, that I need to work on. But I figured Heath Ledger Joker is going to be more fun anyway. So let's just do that. So now we've kind of undercoated the skin. Right. There's also there's also tiny little pinstripes on his pants. So let's knock those out too. Not very good at freehand, but let's do it. USA Pennsylvania here, so in this world we are you and the others watching. So where in the world are you and the others watching? Well, for those of you who don't know, I'm broadcasting live and direct out of Orange County, California. So I'm on uh, Pacific time right now. It is now just about 11, coming up on 11 p.m. out here. So I was hoping, I was like, I need to go to at least 11 p.m. on stream tonight. <laughs> because... Uh, Otherwise, I'm going to sleep too much, and I'm going to wake up tomorrow and feel sick. And that's going to suck. Woo! It is hard to get these lines in with how wrinkly these pants are. Iron your pants, Heath Ledger. Iron your damn pants. I mean, because they are so wrinkled, it actually it's a little bit easier. You don't have to worry too much about getting the lines perfectly straight. You just want them the same thickness. And you can barely even tell that they're there. By the time you finish washing this down with the correct uh, violet, you're not even going to know that that they're there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay. And a couple stripes there. Okay. All right. Got a little stripey, stripey there. Uh, booyah! Mountain Pacific Time, Mountain Time Pacific Northwest. Can't go wrong with the Joker, Clown, Prince of Crime. These are all these are all statements that are true and terrifying to know. Um, okay, so now let's go ahead and let's give him a little bit more skin. But instead of going to tanned highlight, I'm going to skip all the way up to youthful flesh. I think that's fair because we're going to go from youthful flesh to like a bone, like a powdery bone makeup. Black Mask is a cool villain, sir. I totally agree with that. Okay. So this is going to go down as a really quick kind of base coat so that we can get this to dry and stage it up for the actual makeup. It's going to look, it's going to look good because it's going to be fairly light here. And what this is going to allow us to do is actually build some depth, you know, get a little texturing on the face because of the scarring. This looks awesome. <clears throat> Maybe I could, let's, uh, let's bring this in a little bit. Whoops. Oh, I can go in. I can go in nice and close here. Cool. I like it. To quote Borat, I like you. I like sex. <laughs> it's funny to me. Give me a break, tall guys. Jeebus. <laughs> anyway, uh... So we're gonna. So normally I'd be sweating this, like, oh man, his face looks all textured. This looks weird. But I think this is looking pretty rad, actually. Like I want that texture to keep coming through like that. Okay. Yeah. Still looks like Heath Ledger. Morning, all. Looking forward to the new rules. We sure are, man. Where are you? Uh, where are you tuning in from, Shadowcat? Just curious. Also curious. I mean, I don't think your avatar betrays this, but I'm also curious. Like, are, are you when you with the name Shadowcat? Are you referring to the uh, you know the X Men, the Kitty Pride? When she was called Shadow Cat, is there any reference there, or am I making that up? Um, you know, the, the the white he's using is kind of a ghost white. It's it's a it's a more pale white. Let me see what I got here. What do I got here? I need I need a more pale color to do this because I got regular ass white up here, but I also have this really light blue, which is going to be rad. Thanks for phasing in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to do the, <laughs> the Heath Ledger. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. There's almost kind of a Rain Man thing here. So we're going to do some stippling just to kind of play up that the makeup y effect. We're gonna stip all that that color in. There we go. So a combination of stippling and like over brushing to get the color the color and the texture in. Yeah. Right, right. So cool. Hopefully, uh, 
hopefully Nelson will dig this because this is Nelson won this in the uh, in the raffle, so so maybe he'll even get to play this guy tomorrow. Should be cool. I don't even know if he's gonna tune in or what and watch. I don't think so. UK and yes I am. It's also my DJ name. Cool. So you are a reference to uh the Shadow Cat. That's cool, man. Nice. Welcome to the feed. Appreciate you tuning in, sir. Okay. Finally finally Yeah, we're gonna put in the white and we're just gonna stipple the white. Nelson aka Dark Kitsune. I uh, just watch interviews with Tom Waits. You can nail the voice down. So here I'm just stippling, you know, just the basically the highlight edges. That's all I'm trying to get. And I want the I want the layers. Am I, is it is this lit? Okay. Is it lit, fam? God, I hate saying shit like that. So embarrassing. Um, is that lit? Okay. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Basically, that texture looks pretty cool. I think. Kind of what we're going for here. So I'm not trying to smooth paint. Like you're not you're not trying to get like what you normally do when you're painting, which is like drag the paint, like thin the paint and then drag it. Oh, it's miss. Okay. Sorry. I don't know. It, it's okay. My point of sexism here. I just assume the people tune in. Like I, I, like there's only there's there's only a handful of the uh, the ladies that tune in. Um, but, uh, okay. Well, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, and you're a DJ. That's also pretty rad. What do you spin out of curiosity? Now, I, now I'm curious. I want to know. What do you spin? What are you into? Okay. So now we're going to do some, I'm wondering, um, do I? Need to put a little, well, let's just, let's go with it. Beep, 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 beep. There's a little bit of red here in the mouth. And this red should kind of extend over. You guys know, it's not the best job, this makeup job. So if it's a little... So sketchy off to the sides, that's like even better. It's kind of what they're what they're hoping for. That's a little too much. So I'll bring that in a little bit. That's a, that's a lot too much. <laughs> that's like uh, Jack Nicholson there at that point. A little too much. Let's bring it in. And she's from the UK, so she's probably got a cool accent. Man, I wish I... I wish... You know what accent I wish I had? I would love to have an Australian accent. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You guys are probably thinking, oh, man, he couldn't wait to have a North Vietnamese accent. <laughs> but that's uh, that's uh, that's Andrew's job. The brothers, where are, dude, where are my peoples? No Andrew tonight, no Nelson, no Dizzy. Man, all my friends done left me, but I got you guys, so we're cool. We are cool. Um, rock, pop, metal, and some country. Sweet. A little eclectic there. I like it. You know, I always find interesting. We're talking accents. Um, I find it interesting when the other when other countries like dig American accents. Like I, I had one person say, "Yeah, I really kind of like your uh, your dialect pattern," and I was like, "Really?" I'm 
that's a really that don't make any sense like i think the american uh the american uh dialect pattern even the the i guess the more common uh or the the more the the more pitch accurate uh american dialect patterns are not very good it's just not an attractive way to speak english i don't think i think the the you know Oh wait 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 wait. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, just me chilling. See, God, I feel bad, man. Okay, okay. So Blade Wolf is always tuned in. He's always tuned in. I need to like give it up. Like I need to call that shit out because he's because you're fucking awesome. Like you're you're always tuned in, and that's great. And I and I totally appreciate it, man. I really love it. Um, then you got perhaps <laughs> Lucchesi says perhaps they're trying to friend you on Facebook. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, me and Blade Wolf and Albert are here. Yay, B. No, you guys are not B team. We're A squad. You guys are A freaking squad. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna have. We're gonna have another. We got. We gotta work some rotations out and start doing like, get you guys in on some Friday night fiasco stuff. Like we gotta. We gotta keep the team fresh. You know, I love my people. Don't get me wrong. I love you, Andrew and Dizzy and Nelson. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. But you know, be cool to just get a get some fresh blood in there. You know, new jokes, all that kind of stuff. Um, always play the live version of Friends in Low Places. Oh, nice. I do. You know, I don't really, I don't really dig on country too much, but I do kind of in some ways. Yeah, FNF is the new name. That's we're sticking with it for now. I don't know until we get a better name. I had other names like "Don't Let Octave Roll Dice" or something. That could be the subtitle of our show, but I don't know. Uh, is let me ask you guys, how is that doing? Like, is it even? Well, it doesn't even look in focus. Hold, hold on. Blah. It don't even look like it's in focus. Try to get this in focus. Whoa. That better? Better? Yeah? Yeah? Good? It's still... I think... Yeah, no? What do you guys think? Yeah, nice for drinking. Shadow Cat, tune in, if you can, Friday nights, 10 p.m. Pacific. Like, tune in to that shit and drink with us. Because it's awesome. <laughs> Tune into Friday Night Fiasco, and every at least as long as we're playing Ninja All Stars, which we are, um, I will always have a drinking mechanic. And this week is a doozy. I'm so fucking excited for it. Anyway, um, from what I see, it looks bang on, mate. Thanks, buddy. See, you used the word mate like he was from uh, from the UK or from Australia. Pretty cool. Okay, thank you guys. Appreciate it. So let's start um let's start toning this guy down. Now that we kind of have the colors blocked in and we're looking pretty good, but we need to differentiate between these pants and the jacket. Uh so you can see here uh the pants are a darker purple and the jacket is a lighter purple. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's what was intended, but that's what we're that's what is presented to me. So we're going to use so we're going to use a wash and an ink. We're going to use Druki Violet on the pants, and we're going to use Violet ink on the jacket. Okay, um, and we're going to on the jacket. We're actually going to use so the Druki Violet here is going to be a uh, more like a full strength wash. So I'm just going to kind of go in this, go into this full strength and kind of let. And I may actually do this twice because the pants really should be dark. They should be. I, I may actually go with the the wash and then come back in and do the uh, uh, I lost a word. I, wa I lost several words right there. <laughs> okay. Damn, I feel bad, man. You guys are not B squad. All right, you guys are. You guys are. Everybody's fucking A squad. Except for who would be B-Squad? Canvas. 
Fuck, yeah, Canvas is B-Squad, okay? We're going to put people in B-Squad. <laughs> put freaking Canvas in B-Squad. Uh, but, yeah. No, nah, I'm just kidding. Everybody's in A-Squad. Love you, Canvas. <laughs> bastard. You dirty bastard. Okay. Uh, does it come with hyenas? Can't have Joker without his hyenas. I know, it would be cool to have uh, hyenas for this. Um, I also need some green... But I need a bright green wash for his shirt because like it, it's pretty dark. But I, I'm going to use this Beale Tan Green. God, we're like big on the Citadel tonight. I don't know how I feel about that. But I'm going to use this bright green on kind of this part of the outfit. And it's looking okay. You guys are A Squad, okay? Your A squad, we got we got full access here. You can you can ask me for shit. We can uh, you know we can be pals. You can I can spam you with pictures of my kids and no, you guys don't want to see that shit. Nobody wants to see that. Actually, some people want to see that. Like I think Albert, a couple people will be like, okay, like every once in a while, I think you'd be like, okay, that's cool. But if I did that, like two or three times a day, like if you're following me on Instagram and all you saw are pictures of my kids, I think you might not be that interested, right? Because you guys don't love my kids as much as I love my kids, but that's okay. Bud and Lou. They have animal rules in the game for a reason. Nice. Oh my God, who the hell else here is amped for Zatanna? Are you not and and Constantine obviously, but that Zatanna model like I, like we've been waiting like our whole damn lives for this model because it's so awesome. Am I the only one? Are you guys saying that I'm the only guy waiting for? Of course I'm not. Of course I'm not the only guy waiting for Zatanna. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Two washes of the pants should do it, and six at six it will be tea or coffee. I also just moved home, so I need to find my painting mojo. What, dude? We got a. Do you have a channel? You should watch your stuff. Any? Do you guys like who here? Who here has a channel? Let me know. Let's watch. I will watch your stuff. I know Demon Jester had. He has a channel. It's been somewhat inactive. It sounds like he's bringing it back. But we need to watch. Like I need to watch more good shit on YouTube for real. It's driving me crazy. Like, I don't get enough, like, good stuff that I want to watch. And yes, there are hobby channels on YouTube, and they're big channels, but they're okay. They're just sort of okay to me. I really like, if I'm being honest with you, I really prefer smaller channels that are just sort of more vlog style. Here's what I worked on today. And I like hearing, the, like, the weird side stories, like my... Like, you know, my dog shat on my paintbrushes, so I got to <laughs> go buy new ones, that kind of stuff. I hope Hot Topic Street Gang Joker has hyenas. No, he, he, they don't have hyenas for him, but maybe they'll make some. Okay. Let me, I'm going to disclose something here because it affects our locals, and it probably is going to affect you to some degree. Okay, so I have it... Um, one of the uh, LGS contacted me and said, hey, man, I know you guys are looking for the resin kits, the new resin kits for Batman, but I got some bad news for you. I was like, yeah? And they said, well, the truth of it is uh, Night Models has not uh, generated SKUs for distributors and retailers for those kits. Don't forget the nightfall ad. Oh, for sure, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm if I say man or dude or whatever, I'm I, please understand that I'm I, dude is a fairly gender neutral term, especially in California. Um, and I'm a fr I don't know. I, yeah, we'll just say yeah. Anyway, uh, so it's kind of a shitty thing because. They don't have, because they don't have SKUs 
for these new sets, that means the retailers don't have them yet. So if you're looking to support your local, which I always like highly, highly encourage, you might be waiting to get the new sets. And it's it's that's God, it's God that's a shitty a shitty thing for Knight to do, man. It's shitty because it's like okay, well now if they if people want the new sets, they've got to order for us. I'm not saying it's malicious. It's just kind of shitty. Like for whatever whatever reason it is, uh, it's okay, buddy. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, yeah, it for whatever. So that's kind of a bummer because I wanted to buy the new kits at my my local. It, the specifically the one I'm looking at is I want to buy the uh, um, the Blackgate prisoners, the original set, because I have the the second set. I have the set with Lil Spark and um and the guy that I call Eric B and uh and the, the guy with the, the guy with the fire axe. Like it's a cool set, the one I have. But I wanted to get, you know, the other set, the the older set. But I don't want to buy the older set if I know they if I know for a fact that they just re sculpted it. So that's what I'm waiting for. I, I know other people want the sirens. Other people want, you know, Rebirth Batman and the SWAT team. Those are all good sets too, but I can wait for those. What I really want is I want that that Black Kate set. I'll wait if it means buying from my LGS. Yeah, I, I I'm there too. It just kind of it's just kind of unfortunate. Like you have to wait. Um, we're having a similar situation with Guild Ball. The uh, uh, you know, the Blacksmith Guild is supposed to come out next week, and I'm sure it will. I'm like, they're going to release that on time. Uh, but, like, some of the pundits, like, we had an opportunity to pre-order it uh, during Gen Con. And, unfortunately, it just didn't work out that way. So, like, we're probably going to end up getting our uh, our Blacksmiths after the stores get the Blacksmiths. Not much of a gripe, I understand. Like, it's not that big of a deal. It's just kind of a bummer. I was hoping to have blacksmiths over the summer so I could play them, paint them up, and sell them. Well, actually, paint them, play a couple games with them, and sell them. And that's still kind of my plan. So if you are interested in a blacksmith guild ball team, hang on for a little bit. Because <laughs> I will have one of those ready for you. As far as night models goes, the Jason Blood Etrigan... One's piqued my interest. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here we go. Let us make ourselves a little violet ink wash or an ink glaze. We're going to do the pants again. And this should actually bring the pants to the correct color. Yes. It looks like we will get the correct color out of the pants. Which means I need to use the Druki Violet on the jacket. Because the Druki Violet is lighter than the ink glaze. And then I'm also going to need to come back and do some armor wash on these guys. Or on this guy. It's been a long time since I just worked on like one miniature, but it's always fun. You get to you get to just have one miniature. Okay, so that looks like the correct color now. Um, what I could do is I could actually use a more red tone for the top. No, nah, I'll just use I'll just use the. Uh, also dig with the new releases that they give me more freeze henchmen. Need to do some converting though. Night models have been sitting on the Asbats for a long time. Um, <clears throat> that uh, that Joker set is freaking awesome because uh, Knife Joker is pretty rad. Knife Joker and um, oh, who's the other one that's in that set that are pretty damn good. If you could spam Knife Joker with how cheap Knife Joker is and uh, like get all that distract on the board and then field 
Oh God, we're gonna talk filthy list. Never never mind. <laughs> filthy list. Yeah. It's not that filthy. I it just it's terrifying. Terrifying to have that much uh distract on the board. If you can get a bunch of distract and disarray into a crew that's as strong as Joker, like that's kind of disgusting, just so you know. And you got plenty of ways to get more distract and disarray into that crew. But you gotta be willing to spam the shit out of it. And I think most people are. Especially with uh Chaos Agent and uh you know how kinda how that works with Trickster. Let's see. Um but yeah, Guild Ball is a cool concept. I like it. I also like that they're doing Necromunda at GW. True. It was all good developments. But Necromancer is a bit vertically challenged. Not really sure what you mean by that, Shadowcat. I don't, I don't know. Not really. Explain, please. Woo. Where's my... Uh, why don't you my Armor wash. Armor wash. Okay. So we're going to use... Oh, Necromunda. Necromunda is a bit vertically challenged. In the sense that you think that uh, they're not going to build or support that line after, after like, the major releases? Or I'm not sure. I'm worried that they might be doing that with Blood Bowl and haven't really told anyone yet. You know, because people got super amped about Blood Bowl. I, like, sat on the sidelines for that one, and I freaking love Blood Bowl. And I was like, well, let's let's see what they do. Uh, you know, after playing Blood Bowl for so many years and always kind of feeling jaded because GW just, like, left you out there to hang for so long. And then they come back, and they're like, we're doing Blood Bowl again. And everyone's like, Yay! And uh, I got into Guild Ball, and I'm like, well, I'm going to stick with Guild Ball for a while and see kind of where this whole Blood Bowl thing goes. Um, I would love for them to bring Slan back, please, Slan. Um, but who knows? Are they going to? I don't know. Oh, you're talking about, like, the physical the physical uh, play, that it's more, it's it's less 3D now. Than the uh, than the old school version of Necromunda. Um, I don't I don't know enough about the current rules to know if that's being controlled by the rules or if that's maybe a meta that's used to playing. You know, if you have a, if you have the uh, the generation of people that grew up on, we'll call it fifth plus edition of 40k, and they play it that way. Uh, and they're used to playing more 2D, then I can see that. But I don't know if it, what the cause is there, if whether or not it's the, the the new rules or if it's just a meta that does that. Um, Blood Bowl has a few new teams like Elves. They do. The, and Elves are my second... Uh, I really liked playing High Elves. They were like my second favorite team in Blood Bowl. Uh, uh, and, I, and I also like Pro Elves. Because Pro Elves is just a wild freaking ride, man. Like, you never knew <laughs> who you'd have playing the next game. But their players are so freaking talented out of the gate. They're so much fun. It's like playing Wood Elves, but without the guilt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Wood Elves kind of get everything out of the gate. <laughs> They're, it, you know, I say that uh, in Blood Bowl, if you're going to pick a team, just a roster, out of the box, like no additional skills, and you needed to win a game, you have two options. You have Wood Elves and you have Skaven. Yeah, you could win a game out of the gate with uh, maybe Dark Elves or Orcs. Um, but, you know, imagine trying to do that with a Bare Bones Chaos team that you just started. You're going to have a bad time. Amazons, yes. Amazons and Norse also really good right out of the package. Uh, Amazons are fantastic until you run into dwarves the first time. Then it's, then it's just ugly. Kind of a bad thing. 
Uh, Shadowcat True, I just kind of thought it was part of the aesthetic because of the underground and stuff. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I really don't have a comment there. I, I'm not close enough to those games. Um, okay. So, I mean, this is... I don't know. Is it, am I doing something wrong here? <laughs> it's... I gotta let him dry. And I gotta... I gotta let him dry and I gotta pull off some of this stuff that's pooling. You don't wanna have that. But I feel like... I feel like I need more... I don't know. He looks correct. He looks... He's just missing... I don't know. He needs a... He needs a little bit of a wash on the face. Like a really, really thin wash of the... Uh, uh, of the, the deep flesh. I have a... I have a wash medium here somewhere. What I do with it? Oh, it's flow improver. Let's give him a really, really faint wash of uh, my deep skin tone. And see, I need it to really be semi-opaque. Not touched my Nurgle team in months. Skaven are neat, but the Nords are where it's at. Yeah, because you got Nords are great because you get some really good skills out of the gate. Um, you know, you're lacking in armor a little bit, but the team plays well out of the box. And you got, you know, access to the what's it called, the Wolf Wolfenver or something, Veren Wolfler. I don't know if I'm even saying that right. Okay, so just a little bit of shadowing with this uh, ultra-thinned deep skin tone. Bringing a little bit of that skin tone back into this. And I'm going to kind of populate. Vinch would be happy. <laughs> That's funny. Nurgle Blood Bowl teams terrify me just because you know, like, they can shut you down. <laughs> they can shut your shit down. Doesn't matter how pretty you are. Okay. By the way, do you guys know what team what Ninja All-Stars team we're giving away this Friday night on um, Friday night fiasco. Let me show it to you real quick. Sorry to be such a damn shill, but this is for charity. I'm going to shill the shit out of this. We're just going to do this. It's for a good charity. It's for uh, Children's Hospital. This is for our Extra Life campaign. We're almost there, people. We're almost at our next stretch goal of 750. But This is Clan Tancho. From Ninja All Stars, this is the Bird Clan. It's actually one of my favorite clans out of the gate, um, and it's the whole team. Uh, you can to enter. All you have to do is donate to my Extra Life campaign. I'm going to drop a link to it here in the chat. Uh, so you could do it that way. Uh, and another thing you can do is what? Another thing you can do, let's say you are a little bit short on, on funds, and, you know, I understand. Time is tough. Times are tough. Um, but you're still interested in uh, in getting that clan. Uh, what I would encourage you to do is tune in Friday nights. Uh, it starts at 10 p.m. Pacific, but go to, you know, tune in at 11 if you don't want to hear a bunch of obnoxious drunk people gaming. I mean, they're not all drunk. Mostly me. Sometimes Andrew. Um, 
Occasionally, Disney, Dizzy will drink on our stream. Um, but yeah, it's mostly me. Let's see. Why does Zinch hate on Nurgle so much? Demons should be buds. No, the demons have the rivalries, you know. Korn and Slanesh don't like each other. And so Zinch and Nurgle don't like each other. I guess that's a thing. Who doesn't like Slanesh? Everybody should like Slanesh. They're the best. They're the best. Um... I mean... It looks right. Am I getting something wrong? Is um is he supposed to have a black tie? Yeah, and the artwork he has like a black tie. It's interesting. Just give him I mean I don't wanna I don't actually want it to be black. I actually like having a little bit of light there, but whatever. Silly. Okay. I mean, it said black tie. I don't know. All right. Kind of quick look at this model. I don't know. I think he looks pretty cool. Let's do our uh, our little black rim here at the end. Everyone's favorite part about painting a miniature. Am I right? Everybody loves that part. Painting the little black ring there at the end. It's like cathartic. You feel like you just scored a touchdown in an NFL game. Or something like that. Maybe not. You should green stuff a squirting lapel, a uh, flower on his lapel. I should. It's actually not a bad thought. I really want to paint uh, Killing Joke Joker. I think that's where it's at. It's one of my favorites. My, it's one of my favorite sculpts of the Joker sculpts. Is Killing Joke Joker. Don't get me wrong. I like Heath Ledger, too. Jared Leto Joker is okay. The Arkham City Joker is okay. The Red Hood Joker is really awesome. I painted one of those before on commission. That was super fun. kind of want to paint another one, but I can wait. Like That's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, I hope you guys do turn it, tune in Friday night. I promise you it'll be a good time <laughs> for us. And usually when it's a good time for us, it's a good time for you guys too. And again, like I'm I'm serious. If you are if you are interested in being on the show, like hit me up. Tell me on get on my Facebook page, play it painted, send me a note, say, Hey man, I wanna be in, send me a friend request. Like I said, you guys are my friends. Send me friend requests on Facebook. I will totally make accept those. You can send me a note like, hey, I watch your stream. Stop being a dick. Let's be buds. <laughs> and I'll do that. All right. Let's let him dry. Let's let him dry for a bit. Let me, uh, I should back the camera out now because I want to show you guys some other stuff. Boop. Whoa, that's not backing the camera out. That's physically changing the position of the camera. Whoops. There we go. Better. Okay. Uh, Dean from Supernatural voiced Red Hood, the animated series, under the Red Hood. Cool. Let's see what's going on here. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, where's Tori Ling? Is he is he uh 
that dude also. Look at that. There's a friend request. Okay. What's that? All right. Anyway, Ninja Division are doing the Starfinder minis. That is true. Can't wait to get in the game for Starfinder. I don't know. I mean, they, they the minis look cool. I, maybe. Maybe, Blade Wolf, you could talk me into something like that. Might be cool. Um, so anyways, so here's this guy. We're going to let him dry. We'll set him off to the side. But here's the other stuff I was working on. So I'm working on some Ronin for Ninja All-Stars. This guy's rad. Uh, all I did was prime them and color block them the other night. So they've got a lot of work to do. But they're all kind of brown right now. And I kind of picked them. I picked this as a group because they knew that they, they used this particular group of minis use a bunch of brown in them. So this is Onibaba, the old lady. Well, demon mask on the back there. Really kind of cool. Whoa! Get back into that. Then we got... Uh, we got this guy. He is a Sun Empire... Bushi, or Samurai, or something, I forget. But he's pretty awesome. And then we got uh, this guy here, Binky. Binkai, Binkai, I have no idea how to say his name. He is the tank extraordinaire. He's pretty awesome. Um, if I was not gaming tomorrow night, I would finish painting those four guys and have them ready for Friday, Friday's game. But, uh, yeah, like I said, we we want to want to cycle some more people into the show, um, especially if you got like, you know, especially if you you can Ben Kai. Did I say that right? Okay, but especially like if uh, you know you are uh, okay with uh, the little bit of little bit of social drinking and you don't mind crude humor, because the humor does get awful crude on our show. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really just, it's not supposed to be like a professional freaking show, right? It's really just, you're just actually watching a bunch of people game at, say, this would be like typical of, say, Kingdom Con. If you were at Kingdom Con and you saw a bunch of drunk people playing a board game, this is exactly the conversations we have, uh, when we're playing these types of games. Um, so expect that from the show. If you're just tuning in for the first time, it's gonna be pretty crude. It's gonna be pretty raw. Um, we like to mess with each other all the time, uh, and it's it's part of the, you know, when you see these professional shows, they try to make like witty, jokey, like humor things, and it just comes off as to me, it's like, Egh. like I've never, I never really like belly laugh at that kind of stuff. You know, it's got to be, for me, it's just got to be like somebody said something in the spur of the moment. It was probably inappropriate, and I'm going to find that funny. That's kind of where where I am with this kind of stuff. Ben Kai, legendary samurai hero known for battlefield discipline. Nice. So Cheddar Monkey, if this is a hero of yours, then maybe, you know, when you hop in, uh, when you hop in our games, you can play this guy. That can be your character. There's so many cool Ronin. I don't know. I mean, the, I have about eight or so to finish. Those are four of the eight that I need to finish. Um, but even the last four are going to be really good, too. So, yeah, hopefully um, this guy should be... This guy's pretty damn good. Like, he's I'll seal him up uh, tomorrow, and then uh, by the time Nelson shows up here for his game, he'll have uh, a Heath Ledger Joker to put on the board. Should be pretty awesome. Right? Okay. So we're just going to hang out for a little bit um, and, and bullshit. So uh, I excel at inappropriate humor, much to my own dismay. <laughs> well... Yeah, yes and no. I mean, 
I think inappropriate humor is really good. What I don't want is some people spam the button too hard. And it it's like, you know, everybody kind of has, it's not the, the, my limit isn't decency. My limit is the joke has gone on too long, right? It's almost like the um, the family guy thing, you know, the Seth MacFarlane thing. Like he, Seth MacFarlane, they'll, they'll write a joke for like a third of the show if they have to. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's funny, but sometimes it's like, okay, we need to move on, guys. We need to move on. And I, and there's the danger of that when you do crude humor or, you know, you have a joke. You have a really funny joke. It's like, okay, we're going to talk about zombie fried rice. Like zombie fried rice kind of became a thing because Andrew kind of played off that entire thing when we were doing uh, uh, when we were doing Zombicide. And it kind of became a thing, and you know, we still kind of joke about zombie fried rice. But if we sat there and just did an entire show about it, it wouldn't be funny. It would be sad, really, because you can't, you you don't, you're not moving on. We do Asian like uh, accent jokes all the time because it's funny. But again, if all we did was just ride that one train, it wouldn't be very funny after a while. So you kind of kind of got to mix it up a bit like right now we got hard gay hard gay on and you know there's a lot of um he kind of brings his own brand of humor with uh just talking hard gay how do gay <laughs> everybody kind of has their uh their way of doing a hard gay whoo like that whole thing and that's cool and it's funny but you know again gotta keep it fresh right we gotta so we can't ride that one for too long um and I'm not trying to tell people what to do, but I'm just thinking – I'm just telling you it's more of like sort of advice if you want to be uh, – if you if you want to add more humor to the show, then, you know, come at, come at it with some new angles. and um, But it, a lot of that's so organic. Like you just got to be quick. Some people are just fast, and they can, they can make a joke out of almost anything. Um, let's see. <laughs> Nelson better appreciate all the hard work you put into that awesome joker. Lol, I don't know him, but he seems like a nice dude. Nelson's a quality dude, man. Love Nelson. He's a good, good guy. Uh, he's a regular – he's not just a, a regular customer of mine, um, but he's a he's a good friend of mine. So, um, yeah, he's he's good people, man. Um, I don't know where the hell he's hiding, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's probably asleep because he's got to get to work tomorrow. But, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows with that dude? I assume you, you guys know the rule when it, when people are not here, right? What, what, what I assume that they're doing. <laughs> it's a rule. If you're not here, if you're not showing up for my things, well, you're just you're taking care of you, right? You got to get yours. I get that. Go on. Have that tug. It's healthy. It's okay. We can't ride that one for too long, Octave 2017. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> night all, almost 3 a.m., supposed to be up at 7. Good night, Demon Jester. Have a good one, man. Let, let us know about your show. I want to tune in and watch that. I'll hop on, too, if you want. But, uh, you know, that should be fun. Um, so would you replace the metal minis with the resin ones? That's a good question. Um, it depends. It depends on... Um, my priority. I think in theory, I would want to have as many resin minis as possible. But let's say, like, you know, in the case of the Joker starter set, and I, I just said, hey, I love Knife Clown because he's cheap and he's got distract and he looks like a freaking juggalo and it's hilarious. Um, I would be very likely to keep the metal one and the resin one because I need two Knife Clowns. So, uh, so yes and no. If they replaced, I'm hoping they replace the original Court of Owls set, the one that comes with Strix and Cobb and uh, Ben Orchard and uh, Xiao Long. I would love it if they replaced that set because that set is an absolute nightmare to build. And frankly, the sculpts could be better. Like they could be doing a better job. And they did a better job by the time you got the Parliament of Owls. The Parliament of Owls set looks amazing. Um 
So, yes, I would, me personally, I would, especially crews that I'm heavily invested in, I'd probably try to sell off the metal while I can and try to hit a window where I can sell off the metal ones and then the resin ones would come not too late after. That way I don't have, I'm not down crews for a long time. Um, I am planning on selling my Court of Owls crew actually because, I don't know, I just, I love Court of Owls, but I, I really only use Strix now because I like to have Strix in my Secret Six crew or my Secret Six team. Um, she's just so damn good. She's so damn good. I I keep worrying that they're going to nerf her. Because, let's be real here, 61 rep and a henchman that is that freaking good? Strength 4, katana, heavy, I'm sorry, handy, sharp, and rapid fire, and, like, defense 4, and acrobat? That's ridiculous. That's, re like, one of the most optimal builds for a character. Just amazing her weak stat what six willpower so what with six willpower you could go uh you could go 10 inches fire three stars and you would still have actually you could go take it back yeah you would go 10 inches and you'd fire three stars or you know three throwing knives as you ran that's amazing yeah if they nerf strix Oh, Shaggy too dope versus Knife Joker versus Sean Clown. <laughs> uh, if they nerf Strix, it will be the final kick in the balls for Owls. Yeah, that'd be rough. I think the Owls are, they took a, a bit of a hit in second edition mainly because, um, you know, organized crime just consolidated like three pretty damn powerful crews. And they made, I still cannot believe that they made Tetch a free agent. That's just crazy to me. I just think that, I, I, I for the sake of him, I hope they reverse that. Because he's, he's great as a leader, because you have to protect him. You know, you have to watch what you're doing with him. But, because he is the leader. But then, you know, you take him out of that role of leader... And you can throw him in some ridiculous crews. Like, you could throw him in. He's a 75-point free agent with a better mind control than Poison Ivy. And a good, like, a really decent gun. And 8 willpower. Like, and charm. Like, he's freaking amazing. Not to mention small. And with the the uh, preponderance of, uh, of pings that you're going to get now in 2nd edition... Like, he, the guy's freaking baller now. Like, in first edition, not a lot of people were playing him, and rightfully so, because it's like he's a, he's a squishy target. You get the drop on that guy, and you pass a willpower test, and you're one for one removing counters with damage. Like, like it's scary. Uh, I, I fielded him in first edition, and I had to figure out, especially with Secret Six, where you have no bodyguards, you have to figure out how do you screen them, how do you protect them. Especially, you only have five miniatures. And a lot of that relies on um, like who you throw into tank. You've got uh, Parademon, and you've got uh, uh, Catman or Bane. Those are your tanks, right? Um, Catman's a, a kind of a different style of tank, but you know he's defense five, endurance ten, if he leads Secret Six. So that's, uh, that's like a real thing. Um, more than breaking some crews, it really diminishes his place as a character. Yeah, it does. I mean, yeah, I can, okay, I can kind of see that. Yeah, I can get behind that. Um, I just don't want him to get nerfed. I'm like, oh, we nerfed mind control. It now costs you three specials to do, and you got to be within two inches. <laughs> I would still try to line it up, though. Like, is it's just so sad, like what the the games I've been playing, where you just sort of line him up against willpower six or lower, preferably on the opposite side of the board that the enemy leader is on. You don't want to give him re rolls, and you just kind of spam it on on the the henchmen and free agents, 
because you, you need that extra victory point, and you do that at the right moment, and it's just absolutely devastating. You only need to be within eight inches to do this, and I believe um, Poison Ivy's Control Pheromone, you have to be like within four to do that, and that one costs three. Maybe, you know, I, I guess they decided not to change that ability, but instead they gave uh, uh, the new Poison Ivy the... Um, uh, whatever I forget the name of the rule, but it's basically possessed, where you can you can add three henchmen from outside of faction. So, yeah. Anyway, any other comments here before we head out? Oh, I need to. Let's see. Does this even? Are we even a thing in uh, Twitch land? The land of Twitch. I will probably beg you guys to join me on some Twitch-only type streaming at some point because I do want to get a little more presence on Twitch. Uh, I mean, it shows it here. Let's see. Yeah, it's still there. It's there. No one's watching it, but... Okay. <laughs> okay. Oops. I turned off the... Hold on. Whoop. Yeah, it's, it's getting late, my friends. I'm going to start wrapping this up fairly quickly. Yeah. But this Heath Ledger Joker, he was in the extra life pool, and uh, Nelson won him fair and square, so let's just paint him up, give him to Nelson tomorrow, and uh, we'll see if he shows up uh, on the, on tomorrow's games. It's nice, I'm going to, um, we should be streaming with uh, two headsets tomorrow. So we have uh, the headset that I'm using here, and we've got another headset. Any teams in Batman you would recommend for beginners? Uh, there's several. I mean, the probably one of the best teams to run as a beginner would be to um, buy the Suicide Squad um, box set and run the Jared Leto Joker crew in there. So if you take Jared Leto's crew from Suicide Squad and you add the um, um, the Margot Robbie Harley Quinn to that crew, that's 350 rep, and I think you're right about there with funding. So you're like right out of the gate as good as you need to be, um, and your elite boss cosplay. Um, and that crew is strong. That crew is really strong. Seven models, uh, and the amount of like weaponry these guys are packing is legit. Um, that's where I, That would be a, a strong recommendation for me. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a, like, a quick and dirty Batman crew to do, you'd kind of have to go to the builder and put that one together. Like, if you're dead set on playing Batman, um, I also like the Batfleck that comes in that box. So again, there's another reason to pick that up. And then you, to Batfleck, you could add any number of things to get a hundred, a 350 rep crew. Uh, I would probably go uh, Batfleck, um, you may want to go Nightwing, and then uh, maybe a couple of a couple of um, uh, quick response team in there, and it's a strong squad. A couple of quick response re re team, Nightwing, Batman. You can go with a free agent. Um, free agent. I don't know. You can go any number of ways there. With that particular crew, uh, Modern Age Catwoman is really good to add to that crew. Uh, there's so many good ways you could go there. Uh, you could go with a speedster. You know, bring uh, uh, bring Flash in one of those. Um, but no, your your best bet, like easiest out of the gate, would be buy the Suicide Squad box and just play Jared Leto Joker. Play the elite cosplayers. There's like six of those. I'm sorry, there are five of those, and then add Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn in there, and that's 350 rep. Um, other than that, you could also buy all of the Court of Owls boxes and try to make a crew out of that. Me, 
a little less optimal to do that. But you at least know what you're getting. Like you know what you're getting into. You know what's available. So that's good. Um, what else might be a good crew for beginners? Uh, you could play any number of the organized crime crews. Um, crews to avoid for beginners is actually an easier thing. Like, stay away from the old Poison Ivy crew. It's a little more complicated, more difficult to run if you're just sticking with starter and a few other things. Um, you can try to play Wonderland crew out of the gate. Uh, you do have that one notable weakness, though, with... Uh, uh, Tetch having the uh, weak rule, uh, so he's a bit—he's a little bit squishy, but he's a little tougher. He's harder to hit than you might think. Um, yeah. Anything else? I don't know. I think that's—I think that's uh, where we're at. So, okay. So it's almost midnight out here, and again, we're going to be gaming tomorrow. So we're probably going to stream games from here. I want to stream a Batman demo, actually. So if you tune in around, we'll call it 5.30 or so, um, I recommend tuning in for, for that. Uh, Birds of Prey, oh wait, more good questions coming in. Birds of Prey, okay for beginners. Ooh, that's a tough one. Okay, I run Birds of Prey. I love Birds of Prey. Um I cannot, with a clear conscience, recommend a team for beginners. It's super fun. The models are freaking awesome. Um, you can, and you can squeeze out a reasonable six-woman birds of prey team. They will do reasonably okay. The main issue you have with birds of prey is that you don't have a lot of high endurance models running around for one and you are sort of pillow fisted in the sense that you cannot use um, the uh, coup de gras special rule that hurts a lot that hurts a lot with with characters like um, black canary and bat uh, batgirl um, and characters that like you know that use a lot of reinforced gloves or they deal a lot of uh, stun damage, like not being able to use coup de gras hurts. And so you have a super fast, you have a super mobile, agile crew that's good at scoring off objectives, uh, and they're you know they're fairly good at kiting people around. They've got a lot of uh, healthy amount of acrobat in their roster, so you know. You have some protection against uh, ranged attacks, um, but it's difficult because in the combat sense, I feel like they're hampered. If you don't have Strix in that crew, it's going to hurt a lot. I like to have Strix in there um, and Katana, actually. If you have Strix and Katana in there, and you can go, you can pick either one, the 50-point or the 75-point. Uh, the 50-point will get you a full six-person crew, which is cool. But the 75 point uh, is a little tougher. She comes with a, a ranged attack. Um, she's just a little bit better. So, so my my uh, Birds of Prey crew. I tend to like to have Black Canary leading that crew because um, uh, she gets the reinforced gloves. She gets plus one willpower for leading. And then you know a character like that that's got technique and she's got the uh, Canary Cry. Uh, you're going to want the counters in special, and you're going to want to just walk up and knock people down. Uh, ideally, she's screaming at people to cause the uh, the stunned effect, which is super strong in the game. Uh, and then you want some follow-up guys, mainly Strix. You mainly want Strix following up behind whoever Black Canary has knocked down, because Strix doesn't care. Strix doesn't need to use Coup de Gras, because Strix is dealing like straight blood damage so uh so that's a good combo so black canary strix i modern age catwoman because i love the miniature <laughs> and she is actually quite good like that's your obviously you're going to take loot with her and you're going to run around the board and just carry loot and stay out of people's way uh and kite people around 
Um, I also use uh, uh, Batgirl. That one's a little tougher. If you want, you can set up uh, Sneak Attack with Batgirl and uh, you know put a ton of star damage on somebody, knock them out. Um, but again, you can't coup de gras, so they can get up pretty quickly. And then you're going to want, sorry, sorry for yawning, but you're going to want, I'm super sleepy, but you're also going to want um, uh, Huntress in that crew. Huntress is great because she's got the, the good ranged attack and mechanical, um, and I think she has distract as well. So when she does get in, she's got that bow staff to move. Like She's good. She's actually pretty good control once she does get into combat. But again, there's another character dealing a bunch of star damage. So you have all these like fast acrobatic characters that deal a bunch of star damage, but they can't use coup de gras. That's a that's a problem. That's an inherent problem with Birds of Prey. Um, but they're so much fun to play. Oh my God, I might play Birds of Prey tomorrow. Anyway, I think <laughs> I think we're gonna call it, you guys. I really appreciate everybody hanging out. Super fun. Um, I hope you guys had a good night. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll tune in tomorrow night. If not. We'll see you guys Friday night, okay? So that's going to do it for this uh, feed. Have a good one, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.